Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got part two of a good 12 part series of In The Hole. And this part's gonna be my first time in the hole. But before I get started, please everybody check us out on YouTube, check us out on Patreon member programs, check us out on Discord, Instagram, TikTok. Please check them all out. Check them in the links below. We have links to all that kind of stuff right there. So, now let me get started. The last one I told you about what the hole is meant to be and stuff like that, but they also use the hole uh, during transports or they use them for, uh, you know, just a place to keep people. I, it, it, it's sad as that is, that's what it is. Well, my first time in the hole was, first of all, I got arrested in uh, December 2nd, 96. I got convicted, I think almost the year to the day, December maybe 2nd, or third or whatever fourth of uh, 1997 I was thrown, thrown right in the hole after I was convicted I was convicted up in Pennsylvania I was in uh, Eastern District Pennsylvania and that's down on 6th and Market in downtown Pennsylvania and that's where the federal building is so I go there and I get my conviction I go back into the holding cells and these are not the hole these are holding cells and you know, it's crazy because I knew I was going to prison for a long time. I kind of understand what's going on, but I don't know really totally. So the next thing that happens is uh, people are coming back from court and they're crying, they're getting five years and this. And you know, I'm at that point, like, go fuck yourself. But you know, I was like a happy guy who got 144 months. Remember, 144 months. You think, oh, when they, when they read your sentence in months, and then you think, oh, it's 144 months. It doesn't register like if you said 12 years. It's, but when you add it up, it's exactly 12 years. So I ended up getting 144 months four times. And the reason I tell people they do that is so in case I want an appeal, I still got to do my 144 months. It's not like I'm getting away with anything easy, you know. Oh, he can just beat this and be off the case. No, I still got to do my 144 months. So the next thing you do, you go back to the whatever facility you're at. Now at that point, I'm being held at Farrington, New Jersey. I was either at Schoolkill, Farrington, New Jersey, Allentown County Jail, uh, Camden County Jail, uh, but at that point I'm at Farrington. Now Farrington is a medium security prison and uh, when I got my sentence, I went back and they know you got your sentence and then it, they tell you where your classification is. You know, and that th takes a very short time. I mean, I, they had me down. I was a, on a bus within I think, three days. And uh, the place I went to, the first place I went to was Lewisburg. Now, they threw me in the hole in Lewisburg, and I didn't know why I was being thrown in a hole. And it's, it, I was actually in a place called J Block. And when I went into the hole in J Block, it was like, Okay, this is that. This is a dungeon prison. When you come up to Lewisburg, it's got the old walls. You're on the top of a mountain, and it's, it, it's really eerie. I think the place was built in like 1934 or some shit like that. Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. And it's Lewisburg Penitentiary. And then when you, know, when you get there in the bus, they bring you down into what they call a sally port. So now you go into the sally port. Now you're already shackled. Your belly chained, you had a long bus ride, and now you want to just get off this freaking thing. They don't just take you to a place. The first thing they do is they take you out and they put you in another holding cell, and they process you. You know, they take your chains off, then they lift your ball, you know, strip naked, lift your balls, turn around, spread your ass, and here you go into the, you know, you're in prison now. Now you're in prison, prison. Now you're processing in this prison. So as I'm processing in this prison, they're directing you to a specific cell. Now, when you go to a penitentiary, they don't know how bad you are. Now, I'm not getting sentenced to a low or medium or a camp or any of that shit. I'm going to USP Atlanta. Now, I don't even know this at the time. At the time, I don't know exactly the facility I'm getting transferred to. I just know that I'm going to prison and I'm going to the big house and I'm going to be there for a long time. So as I go there, I uh, get put into a place called J Block in Lewisburg. Now in Lewisburg and J Block is the hole. Now this hole sucked. This hole is different than a, this again, every hole is a hair different. This hole had the steel doors, but they had a little square window in the, in the hole 
with two little bars, and it was a, I mean, small. I mean, it probably eight by, probably eight by eight or eight by six by eight. Very, very small with two bunks. And now I get into this hole, and it's, uh oh, you know, this, this is a hole. Now, I'm realizing now I'm with somebody in the hole, and literally when I had to use the bathroom to go take a shit, you tell the guy in the bottom bunk to turn his head against the, the wall over in the corner, otherwise, because your legs will hit the bunk where his feet are. That's how close you are. This is how tight this hole was. And I'm like, oh shit. And then, you know, the first thing they do is you get in the hole and they give, they give you a baggie, a little baggie. And the baggie's got a little toothbrush, toothpaste, the state shit, they call it, you know. And so they give you this little baggie and a, and a bedroll. And, uh, and in the bedroll is, it's not even a pillow in the bedroll. It was a bedroll and that was, you're supposed to have a pillow in the cell. So you go in your cell and, you, you know, the, the dude's in there, you know, you, you just say to him, hey, you know, and I said, hey, because now you have no choice of where you're going. You are going to that hole, that cell, that's it. Now, this is the hole that I was in where we douched the warden. And what I mean by douche the warden is the warden and, and, and the captains and everybody else go down, you know, every week they come into the cell block and they walk to each cell and like, how you doing? And to this day, I think about how stupid, how are you doing? I'm in the fucking hole, you asshole. What do you mean, how am I doing? I'm great, you know, you, you got McDonald's coming for me? Get the fuck out of here. I'm alive. Now they do that to fill their little logs out and say, oh, we went there, everybody's okay. You know, they're supposed to send psychologists down, all the bullshit. Well, they come with, we used to call it the dog and pony show. So I'm in that hole and, uh, now, I meet the guy. Now, let me tell you my feelings of the hole. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared. I'd be lying if I wasn't saying I wasn't on guard, ready to fight, ready to, to defend, or didn't know exactly who my cellmate would be, or what, even if I was going to have one at that point. Uh, and I did. And it's like, holy shit. You know, you try to act cool. You try to act tough. And as I tell people that doesn't work, they know you just come in, you're still in an orange jumpsuit, you just got off the bus, and now, you know, the guy's, you know, you still just start talking, you know, hey, you know, what are you in for, what are you this shit, I'm getting transferred, how long you been in here, I've been in here three weeks, I've been in here two weeks, whatever time you're in a transfer, because the first hole I was in was a transfer hole. Now, I didn't do anything wrong to go in that hole. I just had a high classification. I had a penitentiary classification. Now, Lewisburg is a penitentiary. So that's the first time I actually met and, and understood what the showers were in that place. You know, the first thing, you know, you're on a bus your next day, and you want to get a shower, man. You know, but you, you, you are apprehensive. You know, what do you mean, where's the shower? Where you going? Who you going? Because they'll come down, they'll, they'll open the tier door and go, Shower time, shower time, hold, so one, two, three, ready for shower. Now you got to get ready and you get on the door, they tell you to cuff up, you open the chute doors. Now again, this is my first hole that I was in, so I didn't know how they were going to treat you. You know, and now, I, it, it, when I say it's an old, old fucking cell block, so the cells are like lining one wall, lining the other wall, and that's it. And in the beginning of the cell, when you first come in the cell, on the left side, well, it'd be left walking in when you're walking out on the right side, they had a shower area with about, I think, six shower heads. So that's what they put two, and they put six people in there at once. So they cuff you up, you know, I asked the dude, he goes, yeah, shower's up there, they're gonna give you five minutes, you go in, shower, and whatever. And we all took showers, I mean, he took them, we all took them now. Now, you know, you, you do feel embarrassed, you know, like, uh, I'm going to be showering in front of people, you know, you, you, you kind of start losing that after I've been in prison a while, but at this point, I'm not. Now, I've been in prison for a year, I've been in Farrington, I've been in school kill, I've been out, so I understand prison, I understand how it works, but now I'm, I'm a convicted convict, I'm going to the big house, and I mean the big house, and I don't know that prison yet, so I'm still apprehensive. I'm wonder, worried. You don't, your family don't know where you are. It's not like you could get write a letter or do anything like that. You know, you're just kind of trying to see what you're going to do. Well, 
obviously reading is the biggest thing and if you can get a book or you can get something I don't care what it is to read you can read a love story you know <laughs> that's funny you read a love story in prison if the book is real good and you're getting a hard on you feel weird like what the fuck am I getting a hard on for in this prison it's, but it's a love story you know what they're talking about or you know I used to love the uh, 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 Louis Lamar is a western writer and they'd always have love scenes in those books and stuff but they were good I love westerns so, I mean, I read everything. I think I answered that question and wanted to ask me anything. But anyway, so you're trying to read, you talk a little, but you don't want to talk too much. They had a steel, uh, the, they had a window. Now, this window was a regular size window. It wasn't the little window, but it had a steel grate over it. But you can actually see and see people coming in and off the yard or out of, uh, I think it was out of the, uh, 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 industries, prison industries, because you'd see them come at a certain time and they're all laughing, talking, people, groups are coming and going, and you're looking down and you're, you know, this is prison now, this is like, this is my life for the next 144 months as a prisoner, and I'm in the hole now, so they ask us, do you want a shower? Now, yes, you know, you don't want to say no, like you're a dirty scumbag, you know what I mean? Eh, listen to me, being a dirty person in prison doesn't cut it either. Let me tell you that. You know, people want clean people, so to speak, if you want to call them clean. Uh, you know, I, I once smashed the person's face into a concrete wall because he, he left his shavings in the sink and he wouldn't clean it after a warning and second warning. I just had to make a point. I live here. I eat out of that sink. I drink out of that sink. You literally drink water. You hit the button, you're drinking water. You do what you can, man. This is survival of the fittest, man. You know, the toilets are shitty. You you know, I love it. Like, you know, you clean the toilet seat. When you pee in a, in, in a toilet, especially with another cellmate or, and in a hole, you know, you're wiping down that, and it's stainless steel. You know, there's some people say, oh, they'd lay like, you know, the women do, they'd lay toilet paper along the thing. Trust me, I never did that. You know, I, it was clean enough. It was what it was. I fucking sat on that damn thing. And it's funny, because when you sh flush the toilet, that gets real cold around your ass. You know what I mean? But you needed to do that. Like, if you're taking a shit, and you keep flushing the flush the suction down so the smell and everything else goes down into that pipe with you. You don't want to just sit there like oh, da, 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 and you shit and smell on the whole place. They'll tell you, man, and they call it courtesy flush. Hey man, courtesy flush. Hey man, they do courtesy. What the fuck? You know, you get to know real quick. I knew that in the other prisons. This hole here I'm in as 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 an inmate, I'm in the hole. I don't get to leave. Now, in this place, it's called J-Block Hole. They didn't have rec. They didn't take you to rec every day where the rules say you're supposed to take. We're going to get into rules in another episode. But this is my feelings in the hole. Now, I'm apprehensive. I'm going to go to a shower. Um, you know, and, and, you know, don't think you don't, you know, look. Just curiosity. You know, you know, you, someone says they don't look. I think that's bullshit. You look at another guy and you look at him. You don't look at him for a sexual reason. You don't look at him for that. But you do look. I mean, it's it's natural. It's nature. It's whatever it is. So here I am. I'm getting taken. The second day I was there, it was the shower day. And yeah, yeah I want to show you. Yeah, yeah. So they cuff you up. So you, they first cuff you, your cellmate. And he puts his hands behind his back. That's cuffed up. He steps away from the door. I go up, I knew all of this, I cuff up, back up, they open the door. Now they take you both out, a guard, one guard to each person. It wasn't uh, one guard for the two guys, it was one guard for each person. You go and they take you into the shower area. At this place they let you there, they waited until the other six people were in the shower. So now there were six of us in the shower and they uncuff you all when you're in there. Now you're six dudes in the shower. You only had a pair of underwear on as it was. You left your uh, jumpsuit in, in the thing, but you had your underwear. You take your underwear off. Now, the, in most holes, you know, you try to get shower shoes. Here we didn't have them. You know, you're in your feet and you're naked in a shower, and who knows what the fuck people did in that shower. Because, yes, I've seen guys jack off in the showers. I've seen fucking crazy shit in showers. And, you know, what do you do? You know, you, you, you're just looking like, what the fuck is going on? But this is prison. This is men in prison. 
So you get in the shower and they have this three shower heads this way, three shower heads this way. You know, the first thing I did was I, was, I let the water come on me and I was looking at my wall, but I was always apprehensive of who was behind me. Like, you know, you know the, you know the guy to your left. I was in uh, a couple of showers in there, but this time I was in one side and the other because the, the first two get the first showers, the next, the next. And I was up uh, there, so I had to look to my right just to keep an eye on things. Now, you could feel things in prison. You could feel if somebody's, you know, I, I wouldn't say look, looking at you in a sexual way, you'll feel that. So I'm actually looking, you know, feeling weird in, in the shower. There's no question about it. A little... Yeah, I just hate to say scared. Scared's a tough word. I guess apprehensive, but a little scared. You don't know what's going on. You don't know if you got a fight. You don't know what who's got what in there. Anybody's got a, a beef against you in there. I have no weapon. I have nothing to save my life except my hands. And they had in this place, since they were all holdos, they had sh soap in there. Because when they gave you your, your, didn't have soap in there, they gave you a little, you know, those little shitty bar of soap. So you're in there and you're lathering up and you get yourself, you get your balls, you get your ass real good. You turn around, obviously, to water and you look at everybody. I mean, I don't I mean, you don't look at them in that way. You just look at people. I mean, that's just, that's prison. And you shower up and because they, they gave you a towel to go in there, they gave you that. And then, you, you know, when you're done and you take that shower as long as you can, because the guard will say, Three minutes, three minutes, and then the next, you know, one minute, one minute, and then the water shuts off. The water shuts off. So one minute, one minute, and you, you know, you're already making sure you're totally rinsed off. And now I'm totally rinsed off, and boom, boom, the showers go off, you dry real good, and you put the towel around you, and you uh, hold your underwear. And then the cop cuffs you up, brings you back to the cell, and now you got your towel in there and, 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 and you dry off, you put your underwear on, your celery dries off, you go. It was so small. There was there would have to be about a space, I don't know, body wide. I think I know this. From when I hold one hand this way, one hold this way, I could touch both ends of the fucking cell. That's how small the fucking cell was. Widthwise. And it lengthwise, it was eight feet, a little a bunk, a toilet, and that was it. I mean, you know, you had the toilet on a caddy corner where the pipe chase was. So you'd sit at that toilet and, you know, you'd do whatever. Now, they, when you ate, when they fed you in that hole, you sit on your bunk. Now, one guy would sit on the toilet. That was his chair. The guy who had the bottom bunk, which this guy did, he would sit on his bunk. I would sit on the toilet. And it was the brown trays with each in a little compartment. And to be honest... The food in Lewisburg wasn't that bad. I mean, at a lot of the holes I was in. The food was pretty decent. I mean, decent. Maybe I was hungry. Maybe that's why. Whatever it was, maybe I was just so hungry. I ate that food, and I ate that fucking food good. And it felt good. And you get the tray. When you're done eating, you take your tray. You put it near the door because they're going to come around and get the trays. So you, I, the guy in the bottom bunk handles all that. So I ended up, boom, you jump right from the toilet, you jump right up to the bunk on the top, and you lay down and you read. But the hardest part in that hole was the sleeping. And because I was, I was really like, I don't know if you slept with one eye open or not. It was my first one. I wasn't threatened by the guy. I know that. He wasn't like a badass big fucker that was like talking nasty to me or anything like that. I don't remember him, what he did or anything, but it, well, I didn't feel threatened. I remember that. I didn't feel like physically threatened. Now, I'm not a little guy either. I'm a pretty know how to handle myself. I didn't have all of these tattoos like I had. I had some tattoos, but nothing like I had at this point in my prison stay. So I'm just in the, in the prison cell. I'm reading, and that's the next day is when... This was, I don't know what day it was, but it was, I remember a Friday, it was when the warden and that whole crew come around, and this dude tells me, hey, we're going to douche the warden. Now, in the cell, the guy had a, uh, a bottle. He got a shampoo bottle from some of those little ones, and he had piss and shit in it, literally piss and shit in it, and they spray it. Now, they had a little uh, a hole and little bars. You can actually, we had a mirror. You can stick the mirror in to look down the, the tear and look down the tear on anybody else. And it's like the shit you see in the movies. But it was a little space. It's big. 
It wasn't like the bars, you know, you put your arm out or any of that shit. No, you put it in your angle, the mirror, and you get to see down the tear. So when he told me what they were going to do, I'm like, okay, yeah, 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 like I'm cool. I didn't do anything. As a matter of fact, but I got my ass kicked for this. So when the warden and them come down, they, you know, they come down, you hear the doors open and you can hear the commotion and all that. They waited. Everybody had this plan. When the warden and the whole entire staff, the administration, they got to the end of the tier, a, a word was said or a noise was said or whatever it was, and they started douching it, screaming, douching these people. Now, everybody had these little bottles that was, you know, full of shit and piss, and as they were coming back, they're squirting them and shit, and, and everybody's screaming and yelling and fucking, it was like a zoo. And I'm like, I didn't do it. There's only one guy who could stand at the door. So they're, they're douching this fucking guy, and I'm sitting in the back there. I was actually on my bunk, but like, you know, when you sit up on your bunk, I'm just hearing it and listening to all this shit, and they get through, and that's when I knew it was a beating time. Because everybody's screaming on the tee, yeah, we got these motherfuckers, all this bullshit, and I'm like, okay, and I, I just sitting there. One by one, the goon squad, or they call them the sort team, or whatever they did, they come by, they don't say cuff up. I learned the first, my first time in prison, I learned, if they don't tell you to cuff up, you're getting a beating. Cuff up means get your hands in the back of your head and then and they'll cuff you up and then they have to open the door. If they don't say cuff up and they're coming, you know you're getting the biggest beating of your life. Sure enough, these cells are so fucking small. We heard them opening the door. Now, the bunk, the, the, remember what I told you? You got a bunk bed this way, bunk bed this way, a long passage, a long, there's the six feet to the end of the bunk, six and a half feet, whatever that is, another two feet, so it's probably eight by six. And the uh, the door, when that door was open, I'm standing up already. I, I didn't want to be in my bunk and get ripped out of my bunk. I'm standing up first, he's first. They come in and they just start wailing on us. I dropped between the two bunks getting beaten and just beaten and kicked and I'm screaming like, uh, uh, not trying to like, hey, I, didn't say that. I, love you, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't doing that crying, but I'm, uh, boom, uh, ah, uh, ah. it was fucked up, man. I got a beating and I'm fucked up and he got the first beating in there and I got the second beat. They didn't ask who did it. Uh, were you part of it? This is my first trip in a hole. First trip in a hole. Holy fuck, boy, did I learn about the hole after this. And sure enough, after that, they beat fucking everybody. They had orderlies come by. Orderlies. Orderlies are inmates that are, well, you call them trustees, orderlies, whatever you want to call them. They're the people who are going to clean up the cell. Clean, not clean up your cell. Inside, your cell they don't give a fuck about. Outside, that whole area was mopped and cleaned and desanitized and everything else. You smelt the bleach. I remember that. And they cleaned it up and they had this, this shit called Simple Green. It's like a uh, cleaner and they cleaned that up and shit. And now, you know, the orderlies come up to you and say, hey, they're done. They're done. Hey, you know, the other unit did the same thing. You know, they talk to you. You know, they, they get to know you. That's how shit is passed in holes. You know, orderlies make money, do shit, and whatever else in the hole. They might ask, hey, where you from? You know, if it's a dude that's from your hometown or something, he's going to try to help you out. Even your home state, he's going to try to help you out. So here we are, fucking, you know, after the next day. You know, they, they did not feed us. They fed us. That day, we didn't get fed. After that beat, we didn't get fed. Because it was between lunchtime, because uh, they usually came down either morning or lunch, but this was after lunch. They fed you early there, like uh, 10.30, quarter 11. And they came after lunch. Some of them go early, some go after. This was after lunch they did it. And they fucking beat the shit. We didn't get fed that night. There was no food that night. And I didn't hear one person say, where's my food? You know, everybody's just fucking licking their wounds. I mean, they felt good, a lot of people, because they, you know, they got the warden and they hated them and they, you know, they hate the system. Everybody's like, 
holy shit, this is real. So you go to bed, you get under your covers, and you, you know, you're aching, man. Well, you're aching. I mean aching. You got black and blues on, you're already forming. You know, they beat the shit out of you pretty good. I mean, so you're on there, and the next day, you know, you get up for breakfast, and you, you feel your eyes half closed, or, you know, you're still, yeah, your jaw hurt, your ribs hurt. Now, I was up and down off the top bunk at this time. So I was fucking feeling it, you know what I mean? I was feeling it getting up and down off the bunk and stuff like that. But anyway, and, and my first sort of feelings in the hole, I think, are the biggest things. Because you don't know. Now, once you get there, you feel like, oh, you're, you're a big shot. You just survived the hole. You know what you're doing. You're getting transferred and all that kind of shit. And I'll tell you what, though, you, you know, it, it, you know the, most, the hardest thing I could honestly say in all the hole beatings I've been in, and we're going to talk more about it, all the holes I was in, it was never the beating itself. That, you know, listen, I've been in enough fights to know once you're in action and you're doing things, you're, you know, you're, your adrenaline takes over. It's the anticipation of the beating. It's the anticipation of them opening your door knowing you're going to get beat. I'll talk about when I went crazy in a hole, but that's, that's another video, of course, obviously. But this is my first time in the hole, and it was a beating hole. I mean, beating. So I got to experience the showers and stuff. And I got, I was there for, I think, a week, maybe a week and a half, maybe 10 days, nine, whatever it was, that week. And then the next week I was transferred. Because it was so funny. When I got transferred off that hole, I remember uh, Lewisburg, you know, again, it's a dungeon. You go down into this, like, dungeon alleyway. It's like, it looked like a dungeon. I swear to God, it looked like a dungeon. It's your, you're in the catacombs. You're in the bricks all around. It's really weird. So the guy's, a, there's a guy at a desk and he, you know, he's processing you out. And I said to him, I said, man, hey, where am I going? Because he knows on the paper. He even said to me, he goes, man, who, what did you fucking do? And he goes, you're going to Atlanta, the worst prison in the system. I go, what? I'm like, at this time, Atlanta was a bad prison. It was like, oh, fuck. Why am I going to fucking Atlanta? What did I fucking... I know what I did. I know I wouldn't rat. And I think they did all this to fuck with me. So, I mean, I'm getting processed out. And it's a new fear that I was getting into. And now you talk to inmates when you can. And guy, oh, yeah, Atlanta sucks, man. Where do you see that fucking place? This is a fucking country club and all this shit. I go, holy shit, this was a fucking country club? I'm in fucking trouble if this is a fucking country club and I'm in this fucking prison. So that's how bad the prison was to me. So I'm like, wow, this is no joke, this prison, this prison. So I ended up getting out of that hole in uh, not long. I was in that hole about 10 days and it, was a, a, it wasn't an easy hole. It was a indoctrination into the hole. I ended up spending a lot of time in the hole. You know that. I spent three years in the hole. 11 straight months and all, but we're going to get into all that in another episode. I wanted to give you guys the, the what happened to me in my first time in the hole. And I don't want you guys to go to a prison or experience the hole, and you all know that. But that was my first time in the hole, and it wasn't a pretty time. So anybody, guys, have a great day. Stay safe. Make good choices, please. You don't want to be in the hole. Have a good one, guys.